everyone, my name's Jess. Welcome to my channel, Jess's Modern Life. I'm really excited for today's video. So, as you guys know, if you've been um, watching before, I love to try out some new recipes. So today I'll actually be trying some healthy brownies. So all of these have no flour in them, which is perfect because I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only one. Um, they're all vegan and they're all, yeah, just on the healthier side. Um, so I'll be trying three different recipes and we can kind of see, see what's best. Um, yeah, so really excited. Hope you guys will join me and let's get to it. Okay, so the first recipe we're doing today is a sweet potato brownie, which is something a little different. I haven't actually done it before, but it's pretty exciting uh, to be able to use some fresh produce and yeah, just being able to sneak some veggies in. Sometimes we've got to be a bit creative with those kiddos. Um, so it calls for one cup of uh, cooked mashed sweet potato. So I'm just chopping them super roughly um, because basically I'm going to be blitzing them up anyway. So all three of the brownie recipes today, I will actually be using my food processor. But if you don't have one of those, you can, I'm sure, use an immersion blender, um, a smoothie maker. I'm sure you guys will figure it out. Um, or even potentially you could just mash the sweet potato with a masher and then mix the other ingredients together. We're not like blitzing up any nuts or anything like that. So um, you should be able to make this work no matter what guys. So you can tell I'm doing this first just because it is gonna take some time to cook. So chucked that in. Um, sorry guys, I don't know where the clip went, but basically we're up to making our sweet potato brownies now. So the cooked sweet potatoes in there. I've also added a quarter cup of cocoa powder. So I really do recommend getting the good quality kind. So you guys know me, I'm scungy. I'll get the cheapest home brand, whatever, but it does make such a big difference with cocoa powder. So make sure you get the good um, Dutch processed, I believe. Um, yeah it's definitely worth it. So also adding in some nut butter. So it doesn't mention which kind. I've done peanut butter because again, it's cheap. Um, <laughs> um, oh yeah, this is my little handy nifty gadget. Um, so it's a stirrer, but it also tells me how many tablespoons make up a cup measurement. Um, obviously it's way easier than putting into this, the measuring cup and trying to get it out of the measuring cup. So um, for stuff like peanut butter, if you can convert it that way, way easier. And a quarter cup of maple syrup. Then we'll just blitz it up. So I'm not gonna show you guys what all of them look like in the trays, but basically that's been sent off to bake at 350 degrees. And I believe that one took a little bit different to what the recipe said. Um, that one took 18 minutes to cook. Okay, on to the next recipe. So this is the avocados brownies. So. Um, you can see we've got quite a few ingredients there. We've got peanut butter, um, vanilla, maple syrup, the good cocoa powder. I'll talk you through measurements as I put it in. You guys can see all of this now. Okay, so we've got our avocado. So we'll use a full avocado in this recipe. It is really important to use a ripe one um, because the, the under ripe ones just don't blitz up properly. Um, they end up with lots of chunks. So yeah, make sure you get a nice, soft, mushy one. Sometimes that's impossible to find at the shop. So <laughs> maybe prepare a few days in advance for making these brownies so they have time to ripen. Then we've got the cocoa powder. As I mentioned, the good stuff. So we'll actually be doing half a cup. Um, I found this was actually a really good amount to give it a strong chocolate flavor. Even if you don't add the chocolate chips like I added in the end, um, yeah, the cocoa powder is definitely enough to get that taste. So if you're wanting to kind of do even healthier or cut down calories a little bit and not add the chocolate chips, it's still, will be amazing. Now you can see 
I usually sift my cocoa powder when I'm making cakes, that sort of thing. Um, I do <laughs> bust out my sifter in a second. Oh, here it is. <laughs> and then I realize I can't actually put it over. Um, but it, it honestly didn't make a difference in this recipe, guys. So don't worry about doing those extra steps. You don't need to for the brownies. We're all about less is more, aren't we, people? The lazy way is the Jess way. <laughs> so two eggs. Now I know sometimes a size egg makes a difference in baking. If it helps, I did the 700 grams extra large eggs. Worked out really well. Um, I don't think it would make a big difference for this recipe though. Now, this actually recipe calls for one cup of coconut sugar. I'm all about using what you got. I'm not gonna go buy a bunch of ingredients to make something. So I still, the first sugar you saw was like kind of like a stevia, healthier, I guess, um, sugar and brown sugar as well. So I found brown sugar is the closest to coconut sugar when baking. So that's why I kind of went half, half. I did want to use up that stevia one and I guess it's just a little bit less calories as well because I ate all of them. So <laughs> any anyway, we can cut a couple of calories in that. It's not my fault. Baby wants it. And a nut butter. So this one calls for a quarter cup of almond butter, but I actually just did peanut butter because again, I'm not going to go buy anything else. I actually looked at almond butter because I was like, maybe I should do it for this recipe. $7 guys. I can't, I can't do it. Okay. Then vanilla. So this was the only one with vanilla in it, but I actually really liked it. So this was a teaspoon of vanilla. So that is somewhere I will actually spend some good money. Like I said, cocoa powder and vanilla when you're baking, get the good stuff, makes such a big difference. And a little bit, bit of baking powder. So you can see that I didn't do baking powder in the sweet potato ones. And you'll see at the end when I show, like compare the different brownies, it really does make a big difference when you add that in. And a little pinch of salt. So basically I blitzed everything up and now we're adding the uh, chocolate chip. So that's half a cup worth. Again, I, I got a block on the special, so that's what I rolled with. It turned out amazing. So you can see the texture for this one is like, really looks like a brownie. That's how I knew it would be good. So this one, um, basically all of them cooked at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 170 degrees Celsius. Um, so that one I actually cooked for 38 minutes. Okay, on to the next one. So this is a black bean brownie. Something a little different. Um, so I just did a cup and a half of black beans. I just used tin ones. Um, just made sure I rinsed it well. Then maple syrup, half a cup. I went through so much maple syrup with these recipes, guys. Oh, this went broke. <laughs> That's, that stuff is not cheap. Rolled oats, so half a cup. So I actually really like the oats in this recipe. You wouldn't say it's like a brownie, but it kind of made for a nice sort of slice. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> forgot to put in the blade, standard me. That's fine. We figured it out. Just dirtied an extra bowl in the process. My sink was already full with a mess anyway. So what's an extra bowl? So cocoa powder. Um, so only needed two tablespoons in this one. I actually wanted a bit more chocolatey though. So add a little bit more guys. Baking powder again with this one. So half a teaspoon. The baking powder does make a difference. So if you have it, definitely use it. Checking my handy spoon again for measurements. And then peanut butter again. So this one actually calls for peanut butter, a quarter of a cup. Um, yeah, you could, again, you could use almond butter, but I'm just using what I got. really digging out those last, last bits. <laughs> I think I use like a whole tub of peanut butter in this recipe. 
uh, in this episode. So you can see the texture is quite different to the other brownie. Um, like I said, it's kind of more of a slice, um, quite a bit thicker. The oats and the black beans really thicken it up, but it's more filling. This one I found was really good as like a, a snack as opposed to a treat. You can give it to the kids and they're, you know, not going to be running laps around the room for the next two hours, which is nice. Blake was pretty excited that she was getting chocolate. I was like, sure, it's chocolate. Mwah -ah -ah -ah. And here we are, the finished product. Oh, I forgot to mention, sorry guys, black bean brownies cooked for 20 minutes for me. Again, gonna depend on your ovens. You guys can kind of look out for the right consistency. Stick a skewer in if it comes out clean, you're good. So that top one is the avocado brownies. You can see they turned out absolutely amazing. They look exactly like brownies, perfect texture. I like gooey brownies, so obviously that's what I'm going for. Then we've got the sweet potato. So they also look kind of like gooey, um, but obviously really flat. So that would be the lack of baking powder. Um, you could definitely trial them with a little bit of baking powder if you want, a teaspoon, see how it goes. And the third one is the black bean and oat recipe. So you can see it really did turn out a bit more like a slice. Okay, so I thought I'd do a live taste test for you guys on the different brownies. So, we'll start with the avocado ones. Um, these definitely look like brownies. So they're kind of fudgy, obviously because these have the chocolate chips in them. Um, they've got like little melted bits in them. And yeah, it's just like a decent thickness. Um, we did add baking powder to this one, so that definitely um, made a difference. So I'll see if I can do it live zoom in for you guys. You'll probably see chocolate all over my hands. I've been trying to take photos and <laughs> it's been melting everywhere. Okay. Mm. Those definitely taste like brownies. Delicious. You can't taste the avocado at all. They're not super sweet, which is actually what I like in a brownie. So they're a little bit bitter. Um, I did use dark chocolate in, in terms of the chips, so you could always use milk chocolate, but we're going for a healthier version, guys. You'll get used to it. Dark chocolate is amazing. Took me a while. Just, just eat it. It's good. Um, so this one I'm not too sure about. So this is a sweet potato one, so I'll show you guys. What I've already showed you guys a pick anyway, but so super thin. So there was no baking powder in this one. Um, I actually followed a recipe for once, guys. So <laughs> I should have gone rogue and added baking powder because the other two recipes had that. Um, but yeah, very few ingredients in this. So we'll see. It is quite fudgy though. If you kind of look, I wonder if it'll show it. Um, if you kind of look, yeah, it has a bit of fudginess to it, so maybe it'll taste like a brownie. You can definitely taste the nut butter more in this one. So, um, kind of just like, tastes like peanut butter and cacao mixed together really into a paste um the texture's not too bad but it is definitely missing a little bit of sweetness and the baking powder so um yeah definitely still edible probably call it more of a cake um but yeah i would add baking powder to this see how it goes and just a little bit more sugar or you could add some fruit um, if you're trying to still be healthy, so um, if you add some like raspberries, the tartness would go really well. So not bad. And this one, so this is our black bean brownie. So this definitely doesn't look like a brownie. <laughs> kind of looks like a muffin slice cake hybrid thing. Um, so this one, we didn't actually have a cooking time on it. <laughs> So, um, as I think I mentioned to you guys, it, it cooked for about 30 minutes. So who knows? It could be 
the cooking time that affects the overall brownie. But I think texture-wise, it's actually pretty good, so. So first bite, you do actually taste the kind of briny black bean-iness. Um, I probably just didn't rinse them well enough. I'm pretty lazy. I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> so if you rinsed them a bit more, you probably wouldn't taste it so much. You can taste a little bit of the nut butter. I don't know. This is complex. Give me another bite. You can definitely taste the oats. Um, I, can, I can't really taste any chocolate at all, which is probably why it's the lightest out of all of them. I mean, at least then you're kind of not getting that bitter taste of the cocoa, but I definitely had less cocoa than the other recipes. I think it's almost only like two tablespoons. Um, so I would definitely add more um, of the cocoa powder to this because yeah, I'm missing the chocolateness, people, the chocolateiness. That's what I came for. But in terms of like a kind of oat slice, um, a moist oat, oat slice, um, pretty delicious. Like this will be a good snack. Blake and I will nom on this for sure. Yeah. So yeah, obviously the winner, there's just obviously, um, probably the only one my husband will eat, let's be real. <laughs> Thankfully me and Blake, a little bit more on the health trade, not as fussy. Um, I'd probably say the black bean oat one is next. Not a brownie, furthest from a brownie, but as like a kind of yummy slice, healthy afternoon tea thing. And then sweet potato guy. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm trying it so you guys don't have to. Still edible, but probably not worth the effort. Anyway, that's it from me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and like, uh, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.